What is going on guys? Another video, talk with Tyler. And uh, yeah, on this video, I'm gonna talk about what, am, what would I do, what would I do with $100,000? Let's say I don't care how you got it. I don't care if you got an inheritance. Um, let's say you've been working a job for you know a long time, you were able to save up $100,000. You know, it's like, what do you do just a hundred grand in your bank account, just picture it, a hundred thousand dollars cash in your bank account. What do you do? What would Tyler do? What would be my advice to someone that, you know, was able to get to that point where they had a hundred thousand um, dollars? And how would I go about allocating resources and put money into different things or, you know, not even all about investing money, but what would I do regarding the time and where I'm at in that current stage, right? So in this video, that's what we're gonna discuss. That's gonna be the topic. Real quick, I am doing daily live streams. So if you're interested in those, I will be going live on YouTube at least Monday through Friday. If you wanna see when I go live, obviously if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get the alert for when I go live. If you uh, wanna follow my social media links, I have those in the description below for you guys. So I also usually post on one of those before I'm about to go live. I will be going live later on today discussing the stock market, what's going on, if there's any positions that I'm currently buying. So if you guys are interested in any of that, that will be um, all in the description below for you guys. So anyways, back to the video. So what would I do? I got $100,000, you know, and let's face it, guys, like $100,000 is a lot of money. And if you don't, you got to go Google and do your research on the amount of people in the US that have $100,000. And, you know, there's only 18.5% of people in the country off of data, I mean, this is analyzing data, that have $100,000. So that is when you start to get to real money, you do gotta kinda play like, okay, what, what are your options? What can you do? And first, I would like to start if you're if you're if you have a hundred grand. First, you want to start with your individual circumstance, right? That's a lot of people they skip over that, and I want to make that very clear because that's, in my opinion, in my opinion, guys, that's one of the most important. That's one of the most important factors in what to do with your life, what to do with your money. You know, whatever your scenario is, you have to make sure you're basing everything on your scenario. So I'm going to go through a few different scenarios with you guys. Kind of the, the, I'm not going to go like, you know, some people are very off from the norm, but like, I'm just going to go through basic scenarios for most people in the U S or in the world in general and, uh, kind of break down what I would do in that circumstance. So let's look at the first scenario. So let's say you're a single man, single woman, you don't have kids yet. Let's say you're 30 years old and you don't have kids. You were fortunate enough to save $100,000 or to get an inheritance or whatever, however you got the money. I don't care how you got it. Um, but you're 30 years old. You don't have kids. And let's say you're not married. So you're a single person. Maybe, I'm not talking, maybe you're in a relationship with someone, whatever, but you have no serious commitments, right? Let's say you haven't bought a house yet. You're just one of those people, right? So let's say you're in that position, you have $100,000, you know, what would I do, you know, regarding investing and what would I do regarding, you know, everything else kind of surrounding that position, if that's where you're at in life. So first things first, if I had $100,000, you definitely want to be more risk on, right? If you're 30 years old and you don't have really any commitments, you want to be risk on and you want to be really, 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 really paying attention to investing. Because you're you're going to be able to take a, a lot more risk, obviously risk that you're comfortable with. Everybody's to a different level, but I, whatever you're comfortable with, I would I would notch it up just a little bit, and take on a little bit more risk than whatever you're comfortable with. If this scenario fits your position, so personally, I probably wouldn't buy a house. Um, you know, I'm not against buying a house if you want to, but I would only buy a house that meets your individual needs. And if it's a deal, I would not just go buy a house. Cause you got to think if you go buy an 1800 square foot home, right? Let's say it's 320,000. 
For a single person, you don't, you're not going to be using a three bed, two bath or four bed, two bath. It's going to be way too much for a single person to be doing, right? So if you do want a house, if that's something like you're, you're hell bent on and you want to do that, just make sure you find a house or a condo that fits your needs. Don't go get something with crazy HOA fees. Don't get something that, you know, you've seen property taxes increase dramatically year over year. Don't get something with 2,000 square feet that the utility bill is going to be crazy on. Get you something that's going to meet your needs. But other than that, I don't really recommend you buying a house, especially if there's no deal. Like in this market, you can find a deal, but it's very difficult. I would hold off on that and just remain liquid, right? And as I would do it, I would, I would rent an apartment. So I would either, one, find you like a studio apartment that you can rent, or two, I would have a roommate or someone you get along with that you can share the apartment. And I would do that deal and I would remain liquid. And I'm going to tell you why I would remain liquid. So regarding stocks, that would be a heavy focus of mine. If I was in the wealth building stage and I had capital that I could invest, I would be looking at mainly growth stocks, um, and I would be looking at companies that's been around for a little while that you understand, and companies that might be down 20% plus from their 52-week highs. So you want to you look for companies that are down already 20% plus in growth stocks, and maybe pick out five of those, right? Five of those companies that you understand, maybe you work in that space or something, but something you understand that is already discounted, that's gonna come with a little bit, a lot more risk than you know the S&P 500 or something like that. But make sure it's in five different industries, right? So don't just throw everything in tech. You can maybe do two in an industry that you're like super into. So like for instance, if um, you know, tech, uh, you know, tech is a company or you know, something that, or, you know, or, or uh, security, or whatever the, whatever the company model is that you're super interested in, just focus. You can maybe have two of your positions in that, but you want to try to break your portfolio, portfolio up in different, um, different industries. So you don't want to go into five tech growth stocks. You don't want to go into five, um, you know, airplane stocks or, or five gaming stocks or what, whatever the case is. You don't want to go into those five just industries. You want to make sure you're diversifying your portfolio so you do have a little bit of, you know, safety net there in case things kind of go bad in one industry. But I would focus on finding, you know, growth stocks, cryptos, you know, whatever it is, and build you up a position and maybe put half of your portfolio in that. Now, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. So this is just my opinion of what I would do if I had the money. I'm not telling you you have to do this. This is something that I would do from experience that I've had. Obviously, do what's comfortable for you. Do what is, you know, that you can handle. Don't take on something just because a YouTuber said it and, you know, something go bad. You know, make sure you just, you know, you're doing your research. But I would probably put 50% of my portfolio in that. Now, rather you want a dollar cost average maybe over a couple years and work 50% of your portfolio in, or if you want to just put a lump sum into those stocks for 50% of your portfolio, that is fine. However you want to do it. And that's involving growth stocks and cryptos. I would add those five in there. Now, obviously, cryptos, guys, are a little bit even more volatile than growth stocks. So you got to you know be careful there. But that's why I said to put around 50% of your portfolio in those asset classes. Second, I would have a cash position. So if you're in that position, I would do six months of um, savings in a cash position, right? So that means that if you're a single person, I would do six months in a cash position, have that capital there, you know, that no matter what, if you're, you know, no investing, nothing like that, that your bills are covered, you have that emergency fund put aside, and that'd be six months. So let's say, let's say your bills for a single person are $2,500 a month. So what would that be? Six months, that's like 18000 Somewhere in there, I would put that over to the side, right? So, and then the rest of the portfolio I would have, now that is where I would diversify into something else. Maybe something a little safer um, or, you know, something maybe like the S&P 500 or maybe some dividend paying stocks or maybe you buy some commodities, you know, buy some silver, buy some gold. But really what I would focus on on that part of your money is I would really focus on investing it back into yourself, right? 
So whatever your career is, or maybe, you know, what I'm pro is starting a business. So if you could start a business or something and you already have capital behind you, I would use that money to maybe use a part of it to invest in yourself, to buy maybe some equipment or to um, get your business up off the ground. I would use that money to maybe get around some, some people that maybe is in that industry that you're in that can maybe get you to the next level. I would use that money to, if you're in a, like a career and you need more education, I would use that money to invest it back into myself. Maybe you have a trade or maybe you wanna go get a trade, you know, be an electrician or something, or maybe you wanna go learn coding or IT. I would use that money to put back into myself, right? To make my skills better or to, you know, get me a business going that could possibly down the road increase my income and make me more valuable. I think that's a piece a lot of people miss. Two pieces. One, they don't look at their, their circumstances on where they're at. And two, they don't look at always investing money as back into their self because you're going to have more time. When you have more money, you start to have more time. So you want to make sure you use those resources as good as possible. And the last thing I would do is maybe just use a little bit of the money to go travel. You know, and I'm not talking about you got to go to Rome. You know, if you do want to go to Rome, great. But I would just do a little bit of traveling. You ain't got to go over the top, but a little bit of traveling in order to get a little bit more self-awareness, education, and to get a little bit more perspective on what you really want and how to, you know, really observe your situations and being able to move in a, in a positive space. So just a little bit maybe on going on a trip or two, just to kind of, you know, over observe yourself and kind of make sure you're going down the path that you want to. And I kind of put that back into an investment into yourself. So that's scenario one. The other scenario, which I'm going to give scenario two, is let's say you're a couple. Let's say you're a married couple. Um, let's say you have two kids. Let's say you have two kids. You're a married couple. Let's say you're around, you know, 38 years old to 42 years old, and you have one home. Let's say you have one car loan. Let's say your mortgage, let's say your mortgage is, I don't know, 350,000. Let's say you have a car loan, maybe a 15 or 20,000, no credit card debt, and you have two kids. And let's say you have two incomes. Let's say you're in a career. Let's say somebody's a construction person, you know, maybe making, let's say, 50 to 60,000 a year. And let's say somebody else maybe, let's say, works at a bank or something and makes 40 to 50. Let's say you have about $100,000 in annual income as a couple. And you have 100000 you were able to get $100,000 saved, right? And you're wondering, okay, Tyler, well, the last scenario was great. The last scenario was great, but that doesn't fit our circumstance, right? And I'm using these two because these are very similar circumstances that you're going to see usually around different people. I'm not saying there isn't 30-year-olds. And the same thing goes for if you're 30 and you're married and you have a mortgage and some kids and stuff like that. I'm just trying to use two scenarios that people are at least going to fall close to if they're not in those scenarios. So you're a married couple. You have two incomes. Obviously, you're going to have to adjust this a little bit if there's one income to whatever your figures are. But what I would do if you have a mortgage is I would not, if you're, let's say, 40 years old, I wouldn't go too heavy, right, at paying off the mortgage. So let's say on your mortgage, you have a conventional conventional mortgage, which let's say is the, the standard 5% down, right, on your mortgage. So let's say there's about, you know, $15,000 to $20,000 of equity in your home that you have your down payment. I'm, I'm okay with you having mortgage debt. You know, do I like mortgage debt? No, but nowadays in a first world country, you know, there's really no getting around mortgage debt, guys. Like, unless you're like extremely loaded and you're a multimillionaire, you know, even if you have the cash to pay a home off, let's say you have $200,000, $300,000 to pay a home off in cash, it's not the best option. You know, is it safe? Yes, but generally safe isn't always the way to go, especially in this environment. Because you want to have cash. You know, you want to have buying power. You want to have cash on the sidelines. You want to have money that's liquid working for you. A mortgage, you know, yeah, you're going to have a mortgage maybe over 30 years, but you have your payment, right? So you want to make sure you're covering the payment and you have a big safety net and you're in other assets. I'm not really for putting a lot of money in your home because the problem is, all that equity you put in your home is dead money, right? You can't get to it unless you sell the home or cash out. And, you know, the, the house is going to appreciate regardless. 
you know, of what the appreciation is going to be, regardless of how much your money's into the home. So really the only benefit of putting a big down payment into a, a property is just getting your monthly payment overall lower. But if you can't avoid that, I would just do a standard 5% down mortgage. That's going to keep the cash in your pocket. So let's say 20000 of that's in your home. So that leaves you $80,000, right? So if you have two kids, first things first, I would put a year safety net in the bank. I would put a year, 12 months of living expenses for your family to cover the mortgage, to cover groceries, to cover utilities. I would put that in the bank. Let's say it's $3,000 a month. I know some people might spend four or five or whatever having a family, but let's just say $3,000 for the base, you know, to keep the lights on, to keep the roof over your head and to keep everybody fed, $3,000. Have that in a savings account. Okay, don't put it in stocks. Don't have it in your 401k. Don't, that needs to be in a savings account because when you're a family and there's people depending on you, you're gonna, you're gonna have to have more security and able to take care of any problems. So I would have a year in there, so that's $36,000. I would have a $36,000 fund put in a savings account and I'd have that sitting over there for anything that went wrong, maybe one person loses a job, you're able to supplement that income. Maybe somebody's switching a job or God forbid, maybe both of you lose a job. That safety net is there. A year of your family's expenses are paid for. You don't have to worry about rushing and selling the house or refinancing your house. You have that safety net there. That's 36,000. You have 26,000. So that leaves about $44,000, right? A free cash. With the 44,000, I would do a little bit of risk on, so maybe half of the 44,000, I would still put into growth stocks. I would put into, you know, cryptocurrencies and commodities. Um, you already have some of your equity parked in real estate, which is a little bit less risk. Um, you have your money in cash. So that's obviously, you're just, your only risk for cash is inflation. So with that, with half of the 44,000, put a little risk onto your portfolio. Go buy maybe some growth stocks that you're really into. Divers diversify the industries. Don't put it all in the same industries. If you're into a crypto, maybe pick up a little bit of a crypto. If you're into silver, pick up a little silver and just use that half to give yourself a little bit of that risk to maybe have some potential bigger gains overall in your portfolio. That, may, that way you feel like you're kind of in the game because you're still only 40 years old. You have two incomes, so you're still young enough to have some risk, right? So $22,000 of that, I would put into more riskier assets, cryptocurrency, growth stocks, $1 billion to $40 billion market caps that you understand, different industries, and I would, you know, maybe some commodities, silver, gold, whatever you're most familiar with, what you feel comfortable with, that's what I would use that $22,000 for. The other $22,000 I would use it for goes back to what I was saying before. I would use that other $22,000 if you want to buy some dividend stocks, Maybe take ten to fifteen thousand, put in some dividend stocks. You know, S and P five hundred, something more risk. You probably have a four hundred one k set up that's contributing to the hundred thousand. So if your money's already in the four hundred one k, I wouldn't do this because it's already in usually attached to an S and P five hundred or a safer fund. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out of your way to go do that if you already have that in a four hundred one k. If you don't have a four hundred one k, I would go set that up in maybe an IRA a Roth IRA, some retirement funds, some S&P 500 Vanguard funds, something for that money just to be safe and you know keep up with inflation and maybe give you some returns over time. And the last maybe 10,000 of the fund, I would go back to reinvesting it back into yourself. So maybe if going to get a new skill, you know, getting more education, maybe somebody wants to start a business, a side income, a side hustle, something to put that money back into yourself, even if it's going on a trip with your spouse, whatever it is, to make you overall a better, well-around person, get some perspective, maybe you know, starting that business, buy you a camera, buy you whatever it is. If you're a trade person, get you some tools, maybe get you some nice, you know, boots, whatever it is that you can that you can build your overall skills to make you an overall more valuable person in the marketplace without taking out debt. So that's money that you can use to get better. That money is to be, to be used to make you better that you're not taking out debt for. 
So whatever it is that you're interested, your field, a business, whatever it is, your health, put that money into yourself. Make yourself better with that money because that's always going to pay dividends, guys. It's always going to pay dividends. So those are the two scenarios that I wanted to break down for you guys for what I would do if I woke up tomorrow and had $100,000, what I would do to go set myself up. Because guys, $100,000 at the end of the day isn't that much money, but it is a lot of money at the same time. You know, it is life-changing money to most people out there. So I'm, a, you know, it's even for me, it's a lot of money. So you want to make sure you're managing it correctly. You're using that momentum to get further ahead in life. You're not just taking naps and sleeping on the couch just because you have the money. Because it's very easy, guys, to get comfortable when you start having big lump sums like that in your bank account. So you don't want to get comfortable. Use that money as momentum. Use it to fuel yourself. Use it to start getting ahead, buying some more time back in your life so you can use it in things that give you more value. Um, but, you know, and be grateful. You know, there's a lot of people out there, guys, that don't have $100,000. So you got to be grateful as well that you're in that position. And uh, maybe to take your family out on a good meal too. You know, share the wealth a little bit. Be a good person. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's what I would do if $100,000 landed in my bank account. Hopefully this brought you guys some value. Hopefully I um, answered a few of you guys' questions. If there's any videos you guys would like me to discuss, please leave it in the comments below. If this video did bring you value, guys, the only thing that I ask in return is that you hit the like up button is that gets it to more people. I'm trying to get this channel up off the ground. So all the love is appreciated. And I'll continue dropping content again. If you want to see the live streams that I'm doing on YouTube, um, I will be posting those out on social media. I will be going live later today. So feel free to come by, say hey, and uh, yeah, guys, I'll keep you guys posted with videos. I appreciate you. Have a good one. Out. Peace.